So I want to talk a little bit about uh, 630 meters from a uh, first principles transmitter standpoint. So, uh, you know, this is a little transmitter that I built several years ago for 40 meters and 80 meters. It takes plug-in coils. It has a 6L6 in the output, a 6AG7 crystal oscillator, and it's got a VR150 for regulation. Now this thing was very crowded on this chassis. Um, it's very tight build. The power transformer is fairly small, so that limits your output power. But the 6L6 can't do that much anyway. Perhaps uh, 50 watts input if you had a larger transformer. With this guy I do about 35 watts input. My message is don't skimp on the chassis. You really need to get a chassis that's like 15 by 12 or 15 by 13 and 2 inches is good, 3 inches is better on the height. This is just a bottom plate from a chassis of that size. Both Hammond and Bud make them. But uh, don't skimp on the chassis because you may find that in your junk box you've got a huge TV transformer that you want to use. Now this TV transformer is going to take up a lot of space on the chassis so to start with uh, you're going to use up all your space just for your transformer. But a transformer like this is going to support a transmitter that's possibly able to put out 50 or 70 watts. So uh, this would be a good thing to have. The other thing, um, let's keep it simple. This is a very narrow band. It's not like you need some big vernier dial and tuning mechanism to cover the about 3 kilohertz that we use in the uh, CW portion. You can really make a nice little tuned circuit and with a screwdriver tune a little tiny capacitor like this to uh, handle the VFO portion. So there's no need for a big dial on the front for changing frequency. You're going to stay pretty much on one frequency on 630 meters, occasionally tweaking it to go to a higher or lower frequency. And don't get scared about, you know, these, oh, you need a triple or a five gain capacitor. You can go this way for your tuning and loading, but I like to use these high voltage ceramic discs that are available now. These are four and seven kilovolt type discs, and uh, you can use these especially on the loading side at 630 meters, perhaps with a rotary switch, rather than having to buy an expensive multi-gain capacitor. Uh, good to invest in a meter. Even a simple meter like this one milliamp meter can be uh, set up to, uh, to act as a grid and a plate meter with a, a two-pole switch. Uh, let's talk about the tubes a little bit. Um, this is going to be a MOPA, a Master Oscillator Power Amplifier. Two stages, two tubes. The VFO oscillator is electron coupled going into the final Class C. So you're doing everything with just two tubes. So you need to have a really good tube as that VFO oscillator. The 12AG7 and the 6CL6 are both excellent candidates as oscillator tubes when you're trying to deliver power from a VFO. In the final, uh, you, you certainly could use something like a 6L6. These are 6L6 tubes, the metal type and the glass type. But that's going to limit you to probably 30 or 40 watts out maximum. But you can go that way. 6L6 is a nice tube. Instead, there's so many of these TV sweep tubes around now that aren't being used. I like these sweep tubes, the 6LQ6, uh, the 6LB6, uh, 6CD6. These tubes are capable of embarrassingly high power. If you put six or seven hundred volts on these tubes, you're going to be able to do as much power as you need on 630 meters. So those are just some handy tips. Uh, I want to talk about coils. Uh, at this frequency, you use smaller wire with many more turns. So for the oscillator, you might use a little one-inch form like this to make either a Hartley or a clap type oscillator coil. And you're going to be using smaller wire, like uh, probably number 24 wire to wind your uh, oscillator uh, coil. In the output, 
uh, a two inch uh, PVC uh, makes a good good form for the output. You can use a pie type or you can use a link couple type and get away with a form like this. Again, why the big chassis? You've got bigger coils at these frequencies. Many more turns. You need room for these coils. So uh, you want to put a front panel on or put it in a box. You can find a box to fit around your chassis or just make a simple metal front panel. So let's get into the circuit on the simple two-tube MOPA for 630 meters. Let's talk about our little 630 meter tube transmitter, our MOPA. And uh, it looks a lot like those transmitters you'll see in the old handbooks in the 50s and 60s. It's got uh, one of the most favorite tubes used for VFOs, the 6AG7 beam power pentode, and a 6146 in the final. And it's using a regulator tube. But one big difference is uh, this is a VFO rather than a crystal controlled oscillator. And it's a coal pit style. This is a traditional coal pit style parallel, not a clap oscillator. We find that the uh, clap oscillator is excellent for stability, but you need a very, very good coil. Down here, we can get away with a, a lesser coil, like a slug tune coil, with this parallel tuned uh, coal pits. The other thing that's different is it's operating at half frequency. This is an old trick where you run the oscillator at half the frequency that you actually want to transmit on. So instead of uh, you know 473 kilohertz, it's operating down around 237 or 238 kilohertz, and we double that to get up to that frequency. That's one way to get some stability. So uh, with this tuned circuit in the middle, which is the driver tuned circuit, is tuned to the frequency we're interested in. We are doubling the frequency in the plate. So uh, the final is a neutralized final. Very important when you're using this kind of MOPA with a variable oscillator as your driver. You need to make sure you're well neutralized so you're not loading this stage. Uh, to set the grid current, there's no real control. It's just a voltage divider off this power supply. Um, and uh, you want to talk about the power supply? This is the classic economy style power supply which uses the center tap of the transformer, giving you half the voltage at double the current. Uh, the metering is a, a good feature of any transmitter, and we want to measure the cathode current, which is really the plate current, and the grid current uh, with a one milliamp movement. And uh, you have to be a little careful with these switches because when you're going from one to the other, they do tend to arc over and it can cause a lot of excitement, a lot of sparking. Now in the output, we have a standard Pi network. Um, it is nice to have a dual or a triple gain capacitor for your tuning control. But for the loading, this gets completely out of control. And we're using a series of, uh, of fixed high voltage capacitors as the loading control. It's always good to have some taps on your large coil because you never know exactly what the best combination is going to be. So in this case, I overwound it for 120 microhenries with a couple of taps at 180 microhenries. So there it is. That pretty much describes it. Oh, I guess we didn't talk about the keying. The keying is a, is a, uh, a rise time and fall time control circuit. On the cathodes, we have the make, which is this resistor against this capacitor, and the break, which is this resistor against this capacitor. So this is what we call shaped CW cathode keying. Uh, there is a little bit of juice on the on the key, not super high voltage, but enough that it'll, it'll certainly get your attention if you come across this point in ground. Other than that, high voltage, be careful. This thing can really knock you good, and perhaps it could be lethal. So be very careful when you're building a transmitter like this. Make sure you put shields over all the high voltage parts and the parts around the output tank. Uh, throwing a front panel on it is not a bad idea. That's a good safety feature as well.
Okay, so some of you are going to be a little disappointed because I'm not actually going to build that transmitter that I just designed for you guys. Um, it's a pretty standard circuit that we've modified for 630 meters. In the next video, I'm going to go over the transmitter that I actually built. And it's uh, a little more involved than this one, and it was a big project for a two-part article that I did for electric radio. Stand by for part three, my magnificent 630-meter transmitter.